I wanted a career, I wanted to develop skills in an industry that was relatively secure and showing signs of growth, right? It made no sense to me to start developing skills or to enter an industry that was showing clear signs of declining, all right? Hey, what's up? I'm Adam, if you're new here and if you're returning, then you know, what's good? Uh, it's been a minute since I actually sat down and recorded a video like this. Um, but I kind of wanted to speak today about why I chose to pursue the career path that I have, why I'm in the industry I am, which is tech. Um, and that just some of the benefits, what drew me to it and why you might want to consider also going down this route. Now, my exact job title is a little bit because I'm on a, a, a program where I learn and then get deployed to a client. But I'm somewhere between a software engineer and a cloud engineer. Um, don't worry about the specifics of what that means. It means I do some kind of back-end stuff and front-end stuff and some stuff for the cloud, which you probably know if you if you kind of like live in the 21st century, you've interacted with the cloud at some point. Um, so that's what I'm gonna get into today. Like the video as usual if you enjoy it um, and subscribe. So the first thing that kind of drew me to this particular field, this industry, was the nature of the work itself. So it had the creative element to it, a problem solving element to it, and all kind of aligned with the type of person I am and the type of work that I said that I wanted to do in life. Now, depending again on what particular path you take, like if you're a software engineer, a software developer, you might be doing more of the creative side, the back end, the front end. Um, but what I do, I get kind of exposed to a lot of this stuff. Like, so for example, I was building an app and had to deploy it. I was doing the back end stuff, so like the Java job, and then the front end JavaScript, HTML, CSS. Um, and so, but you get to build, like you have an idea or, when you get into the workplace more, you'll have a brief to follow. And then within those confines, you get to get to unleash your creative side. And so that's something that really drew me to it, but also the problem solving. I tend to be someone that, I need stimulation. I need things that are gonna challenge me, that are gonna make me think that I have to use my brain to logically like work out what the issue is, solve the problem. I mean, you'll come to learn that half of your problems are a typo, but, um, <laughs> insert semicolon into Java, um, but <laughs> yeah, there is a lot of that and like debugging and just working out where, what's going wrong, what am I doing wrong? And then trying to systematically go through all the things that you could have possibly done wrong and work it out. It usually ends in a Google search. So yeah, that kind of element of the creative, uh, but the logical and the problem solving all together is really what I love about this, this particular job that I have and just the industry in general. So the second thing was job security. Now I wanted a career, I wanted to develop skills in an industry that was relatively secure and showing signs of growth, right? It made no sense to me to start developing skills or to enter an industry that was showing clear signs of declining, right? Or shrinking, especially with everything that's going on. And so even just taking the pandemic now, not all sectors of the tech industry, very big. So even usually tech industry like that can mean a lot of stuff. Some elements shrunk, but a lot of places grew, even in the midst of the pandemic. Um, and so I wanted to be in a quite, a industry with the capacity to withstand something like that. Um, and so that's why I picked it. And on top of that, COVID has kind of accelerated what was happening anyway, the process of automation, you know, the digitalization of a lot of processes. Like you can see the way things operate now are, really quite different, but they were gonna, we was always gonna get here. It's just been sped up, funnily enough. And so I was like, well, it makes sense. Like I said in another video, when I was talking about the degrees you might wanna do and degrees you might not want to do, um, it makes sense to be on the side of the computer or, you know, general tech that is developing and like developing the processes rather than being on the other side of being pushed out by technology, technological advancements. So the third thing was flexibility and the option to work with in a range of industries and a range of companies. You'd be hard pressed to find a company or an industry that doesn't in some capacity require an IT department or have some link to, to a technological side, like where is that even a thing now? Um, and so that means if you are skilled in that and versed in those technologies, then you have the opportunity to go into those those companies. So it might be working for a bank in their IT department or working for like one of the big ones, Microsoft, Google, whatever, but it could also be in a charity, like charities, um, some charities definitely need that side and need those people to fill those job roles in terms of their apps, in terms of their websites, in terms of their digital profile, like all of that stuff. And so you kind of can just go anywhere. 
Of course, you can spend time becoming more refined in a particular area um, and aligning your technological skills with other things about that industry. So say it was in the fashion world um, or say sustainability or in banking, whatever it is. But yeah, you, you have that option to you. There's so much on offer. And you can also work with like established companies or governments, but you can also work with startups. Like I think I was reading and despite everything that's going on over the last few years, tech startups have had like the biggest injection of cash, right? There's tech startup starting up all the time. <laughs> so that option is there as well. Another thing is the skills that you develop lend themselves well to freelancing and self-employment. So it's quite easy, I don't want to say easy, but it's smoother than in a lot of other careers to transition to a freelance position or self-employed position because say for example you was you specialized in app development well you have the skills and the capacity to build apps then for small companies like you can offer your services here and there on a whatever basis ad hoc basis whatever it is you can set up your own company providing services and eventually employ people the skills that you develop like i said lend themselves really well to that so that's another option another door that's open to you and then finally it's like the opportunity to travel and work it is a job that can be done remotely depending on what you negotiate with your company of course like some companies aren't going to offer that as much as others um it might become more apparent or more present with what's going on now you might see this option for remote working spring up a lot more but yeah so it can be done in some cases from anywhere in the world which is so long as you have some wi-fi it's lit next thing was the pay and growth opportunities now i'm not saying that you're going to become a billionaire by being like <laughs> a programmer or you know software developer or whatever but compared to a lot of careers the average pay is a lot a lot higher in this industry um if you not including things like finance and stuff where you know the opportunity to increase your salary is very much dependent on like sales and performance in that sense so it can get quite pretty much that scale is nuts but yeah compared to a lot of careers your average salary is a lot higher i think i was looking for a software engineer i was looking at the average pay in london it's around fifty one thousand, but it ranges a lot so like for certain companies you work with that average is more like 80 100 whereas others it's slightly lower that's how you get to the average of 51 i'm not sure why i went through simple um mathematics with you but yeah there's that another thing that really drew me to this is your ability to increase your pay and like uh, your general compensation package is very much linked to your work like if you become more uh, knowledgeable about certain programs you may expand your knowledge you become more skilled through time you put in through work you put in you can then mark you're more valuable to the market effectively Right, and if you know the right places to start investing that time and upskilling, then you can really put yourself in a position to really be demanding a lot. And especially if you've got the portfolio to back it. So yeah, that's it. It's really kind of a quick one. Um, I've only been in this position uh, for two months now, um, and I'll have more to share the more I get into it and once I'm actually with a client. But. It's funny because I'm recording this like almost a year since my first video on YouTube, which was about coding and I was at uni at the time. I never thought that I'd actually be in this position where I'd actually, you know, pretty much gone full force into the industry. But it's funny, funny how things come full circle. And it's also why I encourage people to give things a go. Like I studied geography, you might have studied whatever you studied, but the thing with this is if you if you become knowledgeable in it right and you can do the work and you have the profile to back it then it's so, it's not somewhere that's closed off like i can't decide to be a doctor tomorrow just because i've read a few things or like do you know what i mean like i'm not going to be having a portfolio where i've cut some people open and hi guys let me be a doctor or let me be a surgeon but this is unique in that sense that if you do want to pursue it it doesn't matter that you didn't have a degree i'm not saying that that might not help if you didn't do a computer science degree whatever but you can still get into it right and so yeah i say give it a go like at the worst you spend a couple of hours and realize you don't like it but at the best you work out that you really love this stuff and you go full you know you go forward with it so that's that there's most of the stuff when you're getting into is free the learning opportunities code academy has some stuff for free i would advise if you enjoy it to get the premium um 
but yeah like even just on youtube if you don't want to spend that there's lots of stuff and i'll leave some links and resources in the description bar if you want to get into that but yeah what can i say i'm going to be doing more videos once i become more knowledgeable about this like i kind of want to do as i learn and i work out the best ways to learn and build a portfolio and like stuff like that i'll share that here as well and maybe some like day in the life videos and stuff like that let me know if you'd be interested in it leave a comment let me know yeah all right i'm gone <laughs>